On this evening's Your Event, we have a double treat in store for you. First, I went to the London Veil exhibition and Islam Channel Sultan Ahmed went to an event organised by Islamic Relief Charity Week to raise awareness of the struggles of the refugees. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Your Event. We're here at the library for Sarah Sham Safari's art exhibition it's called London's Veil and it documents young Muslim women in urban cities and what the hijab and the veil means to them now it's really live and it's going great so I think we should go in and find out some more Sarah Shamsavari is a British artist born in Iran who likes to explore identity, social and cultural concerns through her photography. This exhibition is part of the Veil series and her work has been featured internationally and across platforms. I spoke to Hina Khalid from the Open Society Foundation who shared insights on the wider context of the hijab. The Open Society Foundations is a global human rights organisation which works on various issues around the world um, and I currently work for the Justice Initiative Programme which looks at various issues in terms of discrimination which is the strand that I'm working on. We're looking at how we can legally complement the, the issue of discrimination against women who wear the headscarf in Europe within employment. There are women who are being banned who cannot wear the hijab in countries like France, Belgium and Germany. The reason why I'm here is I'm trying to see how we can use arts in some form to complement our legal missions, our, you know, our law and advocacy work. Often, a lot of you know the hijab ban, the veil ban, all these issues. Within all the discussions and with all the policy changes, the work that the voice of these women has not been included. Right now, we're in, living in an era where art for social change is really popular. So we want to try and monopolize on that and find ways of how we can use art to benefit Muslim women who are being discriminated against. A woman's ability doesn't lie in this piece of cloth, it's in her brain. And she can use that brain with a cloth, without a cloth. And that's what we need. We need those women to, we need to hear their voices, we need to see their ability. This exhibition is called London Vale, Parry Vale, NYC Vale, and it's a, a celebration and an exploration of women in these urban cities that wear their hijabs in original, very colourful um, and distinctive ways. It was important for me to showcase um, my identity, I would say, because the world has such a closed-minded vision of how Muslim females look, but what they don't realise is we all look different because we reflect our personalities, just the way we dress, the way we talk and everything like that. So I wanted people to know that, yeah, we can wear colour, yeah, we have different styles and we do all look completely different. And also allowing people to see that we are normal. When they see us talk or even use our hands and stuff like that, they're like, oh my god, what? So it's just nice to give them a bit of a shock value <laughs> to it. This exhibition uh, is important to me, but I think it's important to a lot of girls uh, who wear the hijab. 
and to the Muslim community in general um, because it represents the ladies who aren't represented in the media now. Through this exhibition and through her photography, you get to see so many different women you know, wearing so many different colours, coming from so many different backgrounds. And I think it's important for um, you know, people to know that, that uh, Islam is very, very diverse culturally and you know, we're very fun people. And I think these pictures definitely show that. The idea behind this, this exhibition was, as with many of my previous projects, to encourage people to see each other as human beings. And here you have this group of people who are young, female and visibly Muslim at a time where there is a lot of negativity directed towards Muslims, especially in the West. And yet you have this group of women who shine so beautifully regardless of this. So it's also really inspired by the idea of transformation in the sense that um, whatever happens to us externally, whether it's prejudice or other external challenges, each of us has the choice of how we then respond to that. I think it's a very unusual but yet um, very modern um, exhibition. Um, I really like the idea of so many different women being asked to take their photo and you know, to express themselves in how they dress. I think this type of exhibition is um, necessary for the mainstream because it will take down stereotypes where people just see people in a glimpse of an eye. And I think an exhibition like that would um, help people to understand that they're people rather than what they wear. The participants of the Veil series are a beautiful uh, illustration and example of this concept of transformation. The hijab is my identity. Uh, it's part of my religion. It's a big part of my life. You know, I value my religion, I value my practice, and I practice it in my daily life. So to me, the hijab isn't what's on your head. It's the way you talk, um, your intentions, how you carry yourself. And I, I think I'd be a different person without my hijab, and you know, it, it makes who I am. It's been, it's been a part of my development to become who I am today. It's more about, don't look at me because of my image. Look at me because of what's in there. And that's what the veil means to me. It's my sign of faith. It's my relationship with God. But it's also saying that I'm proud of who I am, and this is me. We're not how the media portrays us, and we are human. Well, it's been a great event here at the Art Exhibition at Vale London. We've been hearing from lots of different people about their opinions and views on the Vale. It's been a long day, so it's time to go home now. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Rukia and this is your event for Islam Channel. Bye-bye. Now going to our second event, Sultan Ahmed was at Islamic Relief Charity Week at UCL. شفت انه بيصير ضرب والعالم هيك بتموت وشي عالم محترقه هاي شي تجي طياد يقع عليهم البيت I think it's a very important crisis that we have the refugees aren't going to stop and there's something that we have to deal with just as humans there's people dying and they don't have the livelihoods they're being erased and we can't just ignore this problem we have duty to answer to it من الحرب ومن الذرب صرنا صرنا أنا 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 صرنا ديله يا أبا what did you take away from the event tonight? We had many inspirational speakers there spoke about past experiences and the effects that the war is having on refugees around the world. What did you take away from the evening? Um, I think uh, I've heard a lot in the media about refugees and migrants, uh, but today we've heard four speakers speak about. Uh, about their real experiences and what they've been through and it's quite different than what you hear from the media because you can actually hear the, the, struggle, the struggles and the pain that they've gone through and this has actually uh, emotionally affected people and 
it helped me understand better what they've gone through and helped me empathize with them. With the money that we've raised from a group of students, no less, um, it shows that there is willingness for people to actually contribute to this crisis. Um, people want change and people want to help these people. So many different universities, so many different students are doing different kind of events all week to try and raise money for the same cause, uh, for the same charity, so it's, it's amazing. And which charity is this? And this is Islamic Relief. Uh, and they have a special subsection called Charity Week. So it started off small at St. George's, spread to a couple of universities, um, came all over London. Now it's spread to Germany, America, Canada, Qatar. So we, mashallah, it's spread all over the world. It just goes to show a lot of our speakers on the panelists um, who are aid workers, it goes to show that their negative experience is actually channeled into something positive. So that rage and that kind of distress that they've been experiencing, um, they didn't just live with it, they, they, they fought it and they challenged it and they kind of created something amazing. They've created a peaceful movement out of it. So I think that is the main kind of message that the audience can take from that, is don't live with this pain. These stories that you've heard today, don't live with it. Go out and challenge the system and be part of the peaceful movement. The event today, was this part of Charity Week and what are you trying to achieve by uh, putting something like this together? Yeah, so essentially when we were planning different events, uh, we thought one of the, something that's very recent, something that's very relevant right now is the, refu the refugee crisis happening. Uh, you know, the news is just full of people, um, some negative things, a lot of negative stuff, a lot of positive stuff as well um, about how people want to make a change. So we thought that it would be a great idea to try and organize something where we can give a platform to refugees where they can come and share their sto personal stories rather than us just seeing things on Facebook and Twitter, you know, warped by the media, etc. And I think it's been a great initiative because um, although, yes, Charity Week is about charity, at the same time we want to try and make a difference and awareness itself can make a huge difference because the people who came to the event today could go away and they could strive to make change. We hope that it's inspired our audience to want to make change. Um, and, I, and I guess even as students who maybe don't have a lot of time and money, I hope we're an inspiration to other people to want to make a change. What were you trying to achieve by coming to an event where majority students? Having a student with us on the campaign will make it like a stronger and it is important for us to raise awareness because you know students have family, have neighbors, have friends, they can tell the tell them about what's happening and they can mobilize people with us to run behind our campaign. So in an event like this today where we saw fundraising for the Syrian refugees through Islamic Relief, what does that how does that make you feel and how do you think that benefits refugees like yourself? There are refugees who are trapped, for example, in Calais. They don't have jobs, they don't have uh, really support because their businesses back home in Syria has been destroyed. They don't really have like uh, financial resources. So basically that kind of, of, of donations and, and fundraising is crucial and important to give people hope that there are many pe people in the world care who will donate, who will support them until they, they get here, they get their asylum and, and then they can get on with their with their life and find jobs and, and, and etc. And so I think us as students, we need to really take a charge uh, about trying to shape the narrative on what's being uh, said in the media regarding this crisis.